it's hard because like the GameCube almost went through like a similar. Sorry about that, folks. Just... I forgot to start recording. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, no, but no. I just got first blood on Trundle. Anyway, continue. Continue. We're talking about um, Nintendo stuff. So, I feel that you know the Wii U stagnating. That, that's just how it is. That's that's what's going on uh, with the console. And they have to rethink because like this is a big money sink at this point in time. You know, it's a, it's a really cool idea. I mean, I, I love the concept of the Wii U and how they did it. I think they did great. Um, the game panel implementation has been really weak, which really sucks. Um, and strong at the same time with how they utilized it. Like, like they could have done more with it. And I feel like if they did the things they would that they kind of hinted at when they first did um, when we were developing the Wii U it would have turned out a lot better like true you know like being able to just completely uh, multitask on the console with the TV that would have been great Akali and I just made the exact same play at the exact same time and we both died <laughs> Oh no, you're good. So, because, I mean, that would have been an amazing feature, right? Being able to just, you know, especially the household with, you know, with like, with kids or family, oh, you know, being shit. able to stream Netflix and your kid could just take a, you know, watch Netflix on the, on the TV and be able to play games on this game like that. Yeah, but that never happened. I mean, it could just be tech. Um, it could just be the technology holding it back from being able to do so. But I don't know. I, I feel like there's just a lot of wasted potential with the Wii U. Oh yeah, and that really sucks. Um, but you know, Nintendo has a track record for that, though. Yep. I mean, and they've done trash and burn a few times. I mean, everyone will know about the Virtual Boy. You know, like, mm. <laughs> oh, I guess not. Yes and no, they'll know because the Virtual Boy bombed so hard it was just on the market for such a brief period of time and just didn't have a chance. I mean, one, who wants to look at the color red all day? No one. <laughs> hey, hey, red's my favorite color, buddy. All right. oh, fuck you, Peter. You <laughs> um, oh, you so rude. But, um, no. It kind of sucks, but it'd be interesting. It's interesting because you know, ever since the passing of Satoru Iwata, you know that in the new president took hold of the company, it'll be kind of interesting to see what his direction is gonna, you know, where he's gonna take the company from here, what he's gonna do to try to, you know, to save face. Because I mean, I mean, I'm just Nintendo has a solid marketing platform, but. But it has a lot to catch up on. So hopefully, you know, 2017 and maybe e hopefully E3 in 2017 gonna give us a good layout of what Nintendo's planning. Oh, and the Tokyo Game Show. Hopefully they'll uh, elaborate a little more. Um, kind of see where they're gonna want to go for their future as a company. And what, you know, especially what the hell the NX, what their new platform's gonna be about. So. Bruh! Top fiddlesticks! Winning! <sighs> I was. Fiddlesticks even... normally? No. No, not at all. He's. The jungler, some of the time. Most of the time, he's not even that. This time he's not his, his rework, his like partial rework, though, was really good. Yeah, he's not bad right now. You just have to be good at fiddlesticks, and being good at fiddlesticks requires putting time into playing one of the most. And I'm not the best fiddlesticks, but the fact that I'm beating a trundle right now. Saying a lot about that trundle's inability to play trundle. Exactly. Because I <laughs> suck it. Because cool I'm not good fiddlesticks. This is. It's pretty funny that I'm beating a trundle. Trundle is like really fucking strong right now. Especially with the new Triforce. What are you going to say, Dizzy? 
Oh, it's kind of cool that people are actually playing Trundle. Oh, uh, dude, no. The, since his rework, Trundle has been so strong. Back in, like, Season 3. Hmm. It was never, like, horrendous. I mean, Trundle was always pretty good crop. Isn't he usually crop control? He can be. Okay, my recommended use of just jumps on a tank and chops down and carries them. Player is good to control, but... Uh oh, Peter! Ah, that last second drain! That did the last tick of his health! Oh my god, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> Shit. Watch King of Kali die maybe up there in like my... Um, no, so, you remember, um... Do you remember Fiddlesticks' old passive, Jesse? Mm, no. It was, um, it was parent, it was, uh, it was, it said Dread. The name was still Dread, but what he did was he lowered people's magic resist. Mm-hmm. Now... What he does is if he stands idle for 1.5 seconds, he gains a movement speed boost. Which is also the same amount of time it takes you to channel your ultimate. Channel your ultimate, drain, draining people, he just, it's good. It's so good for him. Oh, so he just, just could do, out of the way, okay. Don't skedaddle. Ult's out of the way. Jump into an entire enemy team and move faster than they can even comprehend how the fuck that happened. That's pretty cool. I'm really excited. Like they're oh, finally Jesus. bringing Final Fantasy 12 back, which is nice. And we're getting the International Edition. We are. Yeah, we're getting the International Edition of Final Fantasy 12. Shit. Oh. Yuki had asked me about it, but he never actually said anything. You what? I, I had been talking to Yuki about the fact that I wanted to be re-released and remastered. Yeah, it is, and it looks really nice, because, like, cause like, Final Fantasy XII, out of all, the, like, the remastered Final Fantasies, is perfect for those HD re uh, texture redones. Yes. Because, so, I, like, they're literally just gonna pop, because the game already looked amazing for a PS2 game. Uh, next year. Uh, I have to wait a year for it, damn it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, like, I just, because... We're getting the, t the the actual job system. So ah, come on, the, rude. So we're actually gonna get the the new and improved gambit system that actually adds jobs, which is yeah. cool. I I don't know. I I look forward to it mostly because I'm not gonna say it's my fi favorite Final Fantasy because it's not my favorite Final Fantasy. It's no. one of my favorite Final Fantasy games. I think it's a shitty Final Fantasy. Um, well. I like the story for the most part. It kind of derails a little bit towards the end, but you know, I mean, okay. there's Final Fantasy VIII, and that turned into a Korean soap opera so fast. It was horrible. It's, it's not a <laughs> fucking Final Fantasy. But that's, that's one that's of that's Max's favorites. About. Well, the thing is, is that they tried a different battle system, and I felt like they really took Final Fantasy XI and just just kind of rolled with it a little bit and added its own like. It took Final Fantasy XI's battle system and implemented an active that? time battle system. Ooh, Ocean Drake! Which was yeah. interesting. But, hey. I mean, I, I, I think it worked for what it was. And I think it was a definitely an interesting derailment for the Final Fantasy series. It had perhaps my least favorite main character out of any Final Fantasy. Vaughn isn't even the main character, though. <laughs> But he, it, it even, it even, t I mean, yeah, you play as Vaughn in the towns, okay. but we all know he isn't the main character. Okay. Wow! Really? The main character doesn't make him the main fucking character. No, that's not what I'm saying, though. What I'm saying is, like, the game f heavily focuses on Baldier, um, Queen Osh, and, uh, is his name? Is it Bosh? He has nothing but magic resist, but thanks for defending. I really After the beginning. It, it definitely 
focus is more on them, but it doesn't change the fact that Vaughn is technically speaking still the main character. Technically, but I don't take that seriously. Like he definitely. I think he still has his ultimate, and I don't have my TP. He was put in the back seat, like a few hours into the game. Like okay, like because literally his only goal is to be a sky pirate. Whoop de do, right? And there's these other characters, you know, <laughs> with an actual oh, story. All three of them know? came back. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He, hey. he was a Zidane ripoff that wasn't as good as Zidane, who had a Titus personality that wasn't as good as Titus. Like, I, there was I, nothing I don't, about him. I don't think Vaughn had a, was a Zidane ripoff. He, just because he had a vest. It's like... No, I know, have you... nothing against the vest. <laughs> he wanted to be Zidane. Like, literally. <laughs> yeah, but... No one could be Zidane, and that's just how it's gonna be. Uh, Zidane is um, arguably one of the best main characters. No, he is, because he had a great backstory. I mean, like all okay. Final Fantasies, he gets a little weird towards the end. I won't say he's my favorite main character, but that's because I'm super fucking picky, and in all honesty, I absolutely fucking adored, uh, what's it called? Um, Terra. Like, terrible fucking character but adored her oh you're talking about from six yeah like, tara was a great character but i mean six was amazing because it fall like six was one of the few final fantasies where it followed a few characters it wasn't just it felt like it mainly focused on one it focused on quite a few and their stories and how they kind of intertwine with each other and their you know their struggle i mean it wasn't just one main character in the game. It, yes, it heavily focused on Terra, but there was a bunch of other um, characters in the, that had, I feel like, equal importance on top of that. And I thought that was really cool. And it's and it still really hasn't been done again. I mean, I mean, Seven was amazing, because, but I'm not going to say the characters were great. Cloud was Cloud was an angsty brooding, little. Exactly. Um, I mean, he grows up a little bit at the end of the game, and then for some reason, all that growing up he did, they take away after Advent Children, and he's back to being an angsty little booty bitch. <laughs> it sucks when that happens. Um, I and, absolutely... But I think if I'm going to say, I would say Final Fantasy IX would be one of my favorites. Like, because like, it, was, it, it was truly one of the it was the epitome of a final fantasy game i will agree and disagree for different reasons okay what are your reasons for this all right generally speaking i agree with you on almost all ends like, <laughs> i really do i think that final fantasy 9 was a brilliant game um Naturally, I have Heal me! Ah, it feels fantasy. good. Your favorite is almost always going to be one of the first you play. Like, and that's that's normally the way it ends up being. You, you don't normally get to change. So when people have a favorite Final Fantasy, normally it's not necessarily related to anything more than that. Oh, no, I, I understand um, where you're coming from. Because no, that, I'm, just, I'm just saying. No, that makes sense, because... You know, like everyone's favorite Final Fantasy is usually the first Final Fantasy they ever played. Like, For me, it's not the first, but it's, it's definitely one of them. Yeah. But no, I, uh, yeah. I, I feel like main character wise and story wise, Nine was probably like one of the best, if not well, the best. It's just, I feel like it was. I mean, I feel like that one was the most loved and probably the most, like, ignored. I feel like 8 even got a little more attention than 9. But I, I felt and like... I feel it's more underappreciated, oh, eight, which kind of sucks. 9 was not underappreciated by any... I, I promise you. 9 is a community favorite. It's, it's effectively well, the favorite most. But people. that's not what I'm saying. Like, community uh, favorite, that's understandable, because, like, that's within the Final Fantasy sales, fan community. But I'm talking about general sales. Life. That... That's what sucks. Like and that that kind of that's what I mean because like because it didn't get to like most of the pop seven did it got to a lot of new people it brought new RPG fans you know and then nine was after you know Akali was just up here after the witch 
after the fact. A lot of and... the things that people cared about in, um, cared about in, uh, like, 7 and 8 were revoked in a couple of cases in 9. A lot of people liked the, the, I hate to say it like this because it's sounds Mason, awful, but Mason, 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 Mason. The what? The, the stupid broody main character, like, both of them had it. Uh, that's why 8 and 9 became so popular, is because it was the main character who was just supposed to be, like, a total badass with a terrible, terrible personality. Um. <coughs> Which maybe it was so popular with all those, like, broody teenagers. <laughs> it was the angsty kids. Like, that's what it was. Well, but, yeah, uh, and, and they were actually a lot more relatable, especially for the audience for those times, you know? Yeah. So. But it was the first time Final Fantasy used, like, an excitable main character, and that's the best way I can put it. Like, a, not necessarily, like, an honor-driven, not a... just an excitable main character. And which character are you talking about? Uh, Zidane. Okay, that's what I thought. I was just making sure I was following. They then reused that character more often than they used the broody character afterwards. Like, it wasn't until, you know, lightning that we went back to the broody angst. <laughs> you mean Lady Cloud? <laughs> hey, I actually love Lightning's character in the first two, and then can't fucking stand what they did to her in Lightning Returns. Well, I just really didn't like, like, I like the art style, the art mm. direction of the games, I mean, I, I uh, Tetsuo it. Nomura is a really good, I mean, he's really Them good. being bought he has a really for that long was not good. The development process isn't so hard, isn't so great, so, I feel like, you know, his... Him having the reins of Final Fantasy, we had kind of a stagnant time. Like, you know, like, Square Enix just went through this big period where it was just like, I feel the Final Fantasy name was becoming a joke when he had the reins. But, yeah. you know, I still respect him, you know, of what he did for Square Enix and whatnot. But it's just, I felt like he shouldn't have had the reins. Like, once, uh, once the Gooch left, it shouldn't have been. It, it should have been someone else, like and yeah. maybe another senior director. But I mean, it was it was a good. I think he did have some ups and downs, mm -hmm. but I think for the most part, it was not good for the company. Yeah, you know, it's just it, it kind of because people were like, "Wow, this company is a uh, oh god!" It was, it was it just wasn't a great period of time. I um, and I and I like where they're going through now. I mean, they're really revamping themselves, like seeing the you know, the big changes that they're going through. Like, with 14, I mean, normally, I felt like they just would have dumped it off and be like, alright, it is what it is, but they didn't. They totally redid the game yeah, from the ground up. I'm looking forward to 15 because I want to see what they redo with it. <laughs> yeah, because 15 has been in the works since 22, uh, 2006. And, hanky oh my god. Ass. <laughs> you know? And I want to I wanna see what, you know, what they're going to do with that game, you know? A game that we've seen since, be like you know, at the same time, thirteen was announced. So it's going to be really cool to see where they. I mean, so far their marketing campaign is amazing. I like how they're giving us a bunch of like little tastes here and there, like the anime that's out right now. I think the second we episode is due in June. Oh, and then uh, and that movie that's coming out for fifteen as well. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm uncomfortable with certain things they have done, most definitely. But I've found light in effectively everything they've put out. That made sense. No, it makes sense. There's always, like I said, there was ups and downs. But and for the most part, it wasn't great. But there was, you know, there's always a light somewhere. There's always something, some shining title here or there. Or even their bad games, like Jerja Service. I found things to like. Dude, I love the Dirty Observers. Are you kidding me? Well, oh, I love. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me finish. What did I do? I play the crap out of it. I love it. Oh my it's god, so it's an AP Rengar. It's just. It went. It, it's it's like like I said, it's it's a lot of their end game stuff that like I felt like, wow, why did you do that? Yeah, my biggest thing was the the. Alright, 13-2, I saw the end coming, like, ages before I got there. It, it was one of those things where it was kind of, uh, I don't know, I had made a guess on it. 
13 2 is actually up there in my favorite Final Fantasy games, and a lot of people I, think that's weird, well, but... Oh, no, because, like, I heard 13 2 did everything that 13 should have been. Like, yeah, it 13 made was not interactable. Story. Well, that's just the thing. It's also gameplay wise that 13 yeah. was not, nothing was interactable. It was like, go walk down this line. Yeah. Every once in a while, there's someone you can click and talk to. And then yeah. 30 hours into the game, you finally get into an open world area that's still go to a point A to point B. Well, oh, yeah, that's that, that not was even what open I was going to say about nine that I had forgotten. That was gonna... okay. The interactable world and being able to go from place to place on the world map had been done, you know, five or six times before that in Final Fantasy, but I feel like was actually worse in 9 than it was in 7 and 8 in particular. Like, really? There was, I, I, I felt like it was just as interactive. I loved 7's environment. environment, and that, that was one of my favorite seven things. 7 was, was cool because it had a, like, a lot of story element that you did with them. Which... Okay, um, thanks, Graves. Just walk I, in nine, and take the farm. 9 didn't really I appreciate do that. that. It was more of, like, you know... You know, you could. There was a lot to explore, and uh, but you didn't really know where to go. And watch it, watch it. A lot of, there was a lot of hidden things in the game that were really cool, like the friendly monsters. You know, getting to the secret boss and all those other interesting things. But Seven did the overworld map great. He did such a great job. Its level of interactivity was by far one of the best done in the farm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I just... It, it's again, it's, it's a personal belief. Yeah, that, was, that was an amazing call. Um... You've uh, got to be kidding me! You know? Um... <laughs> oh my god. How did that not... Uh, Rengar lived with like 15 HP and Deathfire yeah. Touch didn't kill him. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> But anyways, no, uh, Nine felt, one, kind of like a graphical backstep, I'm not gonna lie. Really? I feel like, like, as far as the, made the graphics? graphics gorgeous, but compared to Eight, it felt like they hardly made any changes, if not less. Well, I don't know. I, what I feel like they did is that the pre-rendered backgrounds, they were, they were still being done even in 10. But I thought yeah. nine, nine. I'm not gonna go like at ten. But I'm, I'm, I'm looking on the platform, which is PlayStation One. Nine mm -hmm. had the best pre-rendered environments. Yeah. To me, it was, and it had the most unique areas out of the titles. And out of the pre-rendered environments, nine had a more interactable. Um. Take to it, which was cool. Um, seven did it better i mean but nine had i feel like it had more high quality environments um hey i got it i, got I thought it was much more done i mean i felt like the graphics were all like they tried the texture quality was so high i felt like the, there was too much slowdown from the battle system yeah, I, I mean felt it was like... definitely the slowest final fantasy yeah i just felt like they could have made so much more out of it because of what they had done before and they just um, Which is my biggest problem. He just like, well, but my thing is, is that I feel like something Square tends to do is that like they try to do something new in the game, and like what you liked, they don't bring into the next one, which they should. You know, especially some no-brainer stuff like like Seven's interactivity with the entire game. You know, it didn't really take it to the next game, and if it. And when it did, it just it didn't do it the way you know, seven did. No, nine didn't do it the way eight did. It's just kind of like it's like, gosh damn. It. Uh. I uh, I feel like there were certain things that certain games did the best, and that's that's kind of what it comes down to. I felt like the world setup in general in seven was probably my favorite. Well, uh, and nine had my favorite. Thoughts. Oh no, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. nine had like my favorite. General, I, I don't know. Generally speaking, it was arguably the best game, just overall. Um, yeah. And, and like, had the best level up system. I don't know why they took away the grid. The grid was you know fucking. What? I'll crazy. definitely, I'll definitely 
because it added so much like like literally it I was came up here for the farm Mason you could is the first Damn Final it. Fantasy where you could truly max out your characters <laughs> it was great and if you put the effort into it you could do it over and over and over again but and it was it was a fun level up system yeah never thought grinding would be fun because then you get to like go into the grid system and you could feel super around with it because you were the one that was changing your own stats and yeah. I don't and know and that was really fun. and I feel I and I also with going on to 10 now I feel not 10 oh she's almost dead because I know it was stat based you know comparing on turns but I thought 10 too had the best battle system out of the Final Fantasies. Because I, I felt like I just active time battle system. Though. Active like, time battle system, perhaps, but in all reality, 10-2's battle system was 13's battle system, so when people say 13's battle system was pointless, you just point at 10. Uh, the only it, difference it being was, you did a lot of mashing. I mean, it was kind of cool where, like, as far as an active time battle system, there was a lot of button command. Like I, at I times, know. but I actually liked the choosing in thirteen out of the active time battle system more than I like ten two. Like the fact oh, that you man. Can choose different sets of attacks. Yeah, because like I didn't really. It's it's weird because like, I have a love hate relationship with third. Them, it was like it was cool. I liked how you like you class change. You know, everyone had a certain amount of classes. That you, you know, I liked the paradigm system. I did. It, it was definitely interesting, but at the same time, it, I felt like it was. I, I want to say like, soulless, but it's just like, it, it literally felt like the pacing of the game. You just press, X, like, in a in, in rhythmically, but you just press X, and it was just kind of. Well, That's I mean, what it felt like. I mean, but there was still a level of skill in that game. That if you just, if you didn't do it right, you were like you those had to boss battles set got and change your paradigms. Yeah, yeah, those boss battles got, especially the last boss before you got to the overworld. Oh, I can't remember no, his I, name. I, I no issue. Uh, oh, almost uh, have Rylai's crystal so, scepter. So the, the main priest. Yes. Yeah. Like that. That, that was intense. Woo! That yeah. was intense. Oh, I think. I was, I was like thoroughly impressed with that because like all this crap that was being thrown at you. That's and... actually what, like, I don't know. That's when I got the most respect for that game. It's literally just that battle. Um, because it was just, it was just so intense. Like, um, and the way, like, Damn! Like, how, how we operated, how it's elemental, and stats would just change throughout the whole battle, and you would have to adjust to it, or you were dead. In turn. You know, like the next time he attacked, you were fucked. You know what I mean? And yeah, I got you. it was by far one of the best uh, boss battle experience I've ever had in a Final Fantasy. I, I mean, because I, you know, Final Fantasy had some great, you know, really memorable. I'm battle. just gonna sit here, but slow I, down, I my friend. I definitely respect the priest battle, especially that first battle. I don't know what it was about it, but it's just like a game changer ah. with that title. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's coming back. Um, um, I never got to actually play 13-2 because I, I felt like I just kind of lost respect for with that yeah. title, and I just I just totally blew it off. But I want to get back into it because I hear you know, hey, you know, if you just with it, okay. you know, you're so gonna have a great experience with Tales it. games. Um, some of them. All right, are you familiar with Tales of Symphonia: Dawn of the New World? Um, I've no, but I heard things. bouncing between the drag. It was really hit or miss, like 98.9% .9 of the time. Oh, okay. Um, and what it was is they had a battle system that uh was generally no nah! dragon please uh oh. what it was is you had your characters normally and then you could effectively get help from every creature you fought potentially if you fought it enough and uh petitioned it 
you, you could make a pact with any creature in the game and huh. have that creature fight alongside Mason, you. tell me you saw the dragon bounce with my silence. Yes. Oh, that was glorious. Uh, the same thing happened in uh, Final Fantasy X-2. Every single enemy you fight, you can potentially to work with you as your next creature. And you still have the paradigm system uh, for your main characters, but the creatures come in one paradigm. So you can get, like, a sentinel beast that is the best sentinel beast, and I think that happens in like, one of the Adam imported Um... <laughs> And they'll provoke oh, yeah. and they literally soak all the damage, and then have like a green chocobo hmm. acting as a medic, and it, it is literally a really fun system. Like I, I had a, a genuinely good time with it. And, oh, that's uh, good. Like I said, it's it's up there in one of my favorites. But the storyline was kind of predictable in my opinion. Again, um, I don't know. Like, oh, I think that's where my. That Rengar, that though. Started, that's where my, like, where I just kind of stopped because, like, you know, Final Fantasy is always known for the story. Third Teens was, like, I don't know. He, he, like, he saw right through it. It was just, like, there was nothing interesting about it. It was the characters that kept me enthralled, but their backstory is one of the best. I think all the characters in 13 initially were really easy to dislike. Like, all of them. We're really <laughs> god. <laughs> oh my god, um, everyone getting caught. But I, I don't think, think I just... I was leaving and I just got jumped. Like, there's nothing I can do but I can always slash all day. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh. Uh, yeah! Oh, um, oh, 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 oh! My favorite no, take a fear. Is actually even Fucking crows! Oh, oh shit! There. Oh shit! Ah! 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 And, <laughs> oddly enough, it's because I didn't actually predict the story. Which Wait, a lot of what? Say I, what was the title? Because you ten. totally. Oh, ten. Yes. I didn't actually like Titus for the longest time. I thought he was like the most dislikable character. Because he was like yeah. a surfer dude, just like oh. a whiny surfer. He was a whiny <laughs> little bitch. Like that's all there was to it. Like. <laughs> yeah, I, he was I such wasn't a baby really throughout the game, but. But he manned up towards the half, like half. I huh. didn't care about the ah. half. Like I no. didn't really care if he manned up. No, no. Oh no. my god. His personality the timing. totally yeah. changed at the, at like towards the end of the game, and he was a totally different person because he's he grown up. He's growing up, you know. Like <laughs> he got into a it was a pretty shitty situation. He kind of got himself to. He was some like young guy, hot shot sports player, you know, and just got whatever he wanted, and and then all this crap happened, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but it was all a dream! I... Fuck. That's what I did. I did not expect it to go the way it did. I thought yeah. for sure, like, either... I, like, I figured we'd end up killing Sin. Like, that That was... From the start, I was like, okay, we, we are not going to go through this stupid ritual shit. We're gonna kill this motherfucker. And, like, I, I, I knew it from the start. But, uh... As things went on, I was like, okay, since his daddy, that's right. We keep going on. I'm like, okay, now there's gonna be a daddy-son showdown. This is gonna be entertaining. You know, like, I'm... I'm watching and I'm looking forward to this. And, uh... And, you know, it throws my ass for a loop. Everything's convoluted and... You, Yevin, is the problem, not Sin, and... You, Naleska, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm lost now. Okay, we'll just see where this goes. And oh, a lot man. of people claimed it was super linear in storyline, and it, it is, I mean... It is. There's, there's I mean, plenty of interactions on the world, just not as many as they could have made. That yeah, felt a little I mean, bit... And that was the sad part about it. <laughs> um, I and adored I... The, getting the ultimate weapons, though. Like, adored Oh, it. that was so much fun. Like, the, the discovery... Find, like, that was my favorite... Oh, you're dumb. Because, like, nine, we just kind of clicked. You know, they, they were in weird areas. Mm -hmm. um, seven kind of did the same thing. Um, sometimes you had to do certain Like, just click on the right place or have the right item at the right time. Who that? And then eight, was, eight was weird. Um, but 
10 had, was, was the, definitely the funnest was definitely the funnest Ooh. game to the ultimate weapons. But, I don't know. <laughs> and the ultimate it, it, weapons were so great. Like, uh, Waka's Death Ball of Doom. No. <laughs> it was just I a ball with a bunch of blades. Like, where this... Yeah. <laughs> I remember, like, going back to the very beginning of this conversation. I, after falling in love with 10 and loving 9 and 7, and 6, and 8, to an extent. I really didn't care for 8 as much as a lot of my friends did. Well, like I said, um, eight, was it, 8 turned into a, a Korean soap opera. Really awkward. <laughs> <But> <laughs> really, really awkward. <laughs> Not a uh, Japanese soap opera. Korean soap opera. Oh god, that's so weird. Yeah. And then, it, and then the story, like, all the twist, the way, like, you guys are all relate um you guys were orphans and you have amnesia you guys just didn't remember until now like, oh. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah and Sid and the sorceress they were married and they still are <laughs> and, they, and Sid also raised you when you were kids and so did the sorceress yeah it, it, it was <laughs> oh god it was. <laughs> I played it while I was seven. It was the first Final Fantasy I played. And do you remember? Like, do you remember the first Final Fantasy you played? How old were you? Ah, uh, God. I think I was like eight. Okay, imagine trying to comprehend the Korean soap opera at that age. <laughs> there was it, no comprehension. It didn't happen. <laughs> My little brain was like. The you know what? I'm just glad it wasn't. Final Fantasy VIII was my first Final Fantasy as well, actually. Um, I think three, um, six for the Super Nintendo or Final Fantasy three, but I didn't play it. I just watched my cousins play through it. But my first true one was uh, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, which isn't even a Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, oh wait, okay, you're right. That was the first Final Fantasy. We have, played. we have three abyssals. Oh. I like it. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> On the game. Like, what, I heard you liked getting your armor shredded. Yeah, and it was even Final Fantasy was the. <laughs> or your magic <laughs> That was pretty awesome. Yeah, those games were hilarious because you had chainsaws and shotguns and laser guns. <laughs> I just remember having a flail. <laughs> um. Oh, you play Final Fantasy Adventure. That was oh, that that right. Yeah. That's right. And, and, but Adventure. that's the first. That was the first Mana game. That was, yeah, yeah. that was really fucking weird. I like. Yeah, that. you know what's cool though? <laughs> I had that on the Game Boy. They so, remade okay. it, which is cool. They did. Yeah, they remade it. It's they made it. It's like it's a full, fully fledged 3D game. Correct. It, it's on the iOS, but I hopefully at some point they'll have a piece. All right, Rengar killed our support, but we just got their jungler. Which would be nice. She died anyway. Hey, Kai, did you know Final Fantasy Max? Uh, it was probably a while back ago, but that got re-released. Really Stop! If you haven't gotten yeah, it. Yeah, right wasn't there an HD remake for it? Yeah, that's kind of, but... Or a semi-HD rebuild? Yes, kind of. That's what I was kind of... It was, it was like, eh. The textures look much better, Good and the, they finally have like the the, um, the tweaks that you kind of like the speed up of the battle system because nine didn't have the fastest battle. System. Yeah, that ain't hard. <laughs> Nine's battle system got painfully. I got a little impatient sometimes when I can't. So. I doing, can't guys? believe I er beat a trundle mm -hmm. early as fiddlesticks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> cool. Maybe Max will even be on today.